Want to help the channel? Go to shopclownfish.com where you can check out official Clownfish TV merchandise and our brand new shop. It helps us out. Also, check us out on Facebook, facebook.com slash clownfish TV for more art and gaming live streams that we don't do on YouTube. We want to see you over there as well. Now let's get into the video. Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, and we're going to go back down the rabbit hole. And, and no, that's not a, a euphemism. We're going to talk about Japanese manga and light novels and the ban, the seeming uh, attack on Japanese manga in the last couple of weeks, last couple of months, and the Omega Karen who seems to be behind it. But could it be that there are more machinations going on behind the scenes than a lot of people realized it's it's possible? We're going to talk about that. Uh, before we get into it, please subscribe for more pop culture, news, views, and rants, guys. We really appreciate it. Now, this came from Dmanga Lover on Twitter. This is actually a manga showing somebody going to prison prison for violating the new youth protection guidelines uh, he didn't understand what he did that was so bad but he went to prison for making manga that uh, this australian omega karen would have you believe that uh, manga is directly leading to exploitation of children that it's actually harming children she believes apparently that she is saving lives you know we had tipper gore thinking she was saving lives uh saving people from problematic song lyrics and and video games and and all of this stuff uh you know 30 years ago but here we go again and this woman connie Bonaros honestly thinks that she is saving children by banning manga banning light novels and the japanese are mocking her and there there might be more to this than uh what we first thought that she actually seems to be working with some folks in japan too uh who have political agendas to get rid of manga but this this might not be too far-fetched you know uh, we could be looking at a scenario where cartoonists go to jail for drawing things that are considered inappropriate. The funny thing is, is what she's targeting, uh, the books that she's targeting are actually books that are considered fairly mainstream. I mean, No Game, No Life. Uh, I'm looking out here on Crunchyroll, we've got the anime. Iromanga Sensei, which, yeah, okay. Okay, I'll, I'll, I can maybe possibly maybe give you that one. But still, it's pretty. it's a pretty mainstream uh show especially when you look at you know sword art online sword art online is one of the books that have been banned and that is a very very mainstream show so what is what is going on here well you have to roll the clock back uh five months ago that australia was looking to ban problematic manga light novels and anime including goblin slayer which is so weird because you start to look at some of these titles and they're the ones that even the mainstream media here in the, the U.S. has found problematic. Of course, Goblin Slayer has that scene in it, even though the series is not about that. Because it has that scene, it was problematic and something that needed to be banned. And then the next thing you know, here comes uh, legislators in Australia trying to get that book banned as well. But apparently, Bonaros is working with lobbyists in japan according to black sage d who put this out on twitter that uh, she is actually working with lobbyists that have a political agenda from japan so she might just be she might not actually be the omega karen she might actually just be a puppet of feminists in japan who have a problem with this and this shouldn't shouldn't surprise anybody i mean look there's been lewd manga for decades decades uh, but all of a sudden, it has become a hot issue. We don't know what's going on behind the scenes, but we know that this is this is a hot topic over in Japan. I mean, it's gotten so bad that manga artists have had to go to the government and complain that they're afraid of censorship. That uh, manga has always been pretty pretty open 
and they're afraid of censorship. And there are people within Japan who have a problem with it. Uh, Kazuko Ito is the what attorney uh, attorney Tokyo uh, attorney Tokyo Secretary General Human Rights uh, Human Rights PhD candidate. And she is having brunch or breakfast with Connie Bonaros, the Omega Karen. And they're probably sitting here looking through all the, the lewd manga, deciding uh, which manga is problematic, which manga has to be banned. Banned. You know, here's a full story from ABC Australia. Uh, two South Australian crossbench politicians are calling for an urgent review of classification laws after, after discovering videos in comic books sold in Australia that depict sexual images of minors, including some things that I can't talk about. Uh, SA Best Upper House MP Connie Bonaros, and bear with me, I don't understand Australian politics, so I, I can't tell you what position is what here, has been investigating Japanese anime and manga and found many for sale that she believes should not have got past the classification board. They're effectively regulating this material like they would a video game or like they would a film, but they're doing so in isolation of our criminal law. Our federal criminal code clearly states that this material would meet the definition of exploitation material and therefore should not be available at all. No game, no life is, is apparently, according to Omega Karen, no Game, No Life is responsible for bad things happening to children, according to Omega Karen. That includes the problematic animation Iromanga Sensei, where a 15-year-old boy and his 12-year-old sister create lewds. And uh, comic book No Game, No Life, where an 18-year-old boy and his 11-year-old sister enter an online gaming world. She said these publications were available in bookshops and DVD stores around Australia, perverting the, to the youth or, or making the making the middle-aged mans do things that they, they should not do. You have Astro Boy and Pokemon in amongst all that material. There are titles which clearly contain material that meets the definition of exploitation. Themes of minors involved in stuff and things. The choice was absolutely endless. All the stuff and things involving minors that you could get your hands on, your grubby little, your grubby little man hands on. Her colleague, Sterling Griff, Sterling Grift has joined her campaign, launching a motion in Parliament calling for an urgent review of classification regulations. Um, so experts, ex which experts? Experts that advocate against exploitation have referred to this type of anime and manga as gateway. It's a gateway drug to the abuse of actual children. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Look, there's is there some stuff out there that I think is pretty risque? Some lolly stuff or whatever? Yeah, you know, would I read it? No. But at the end of the day, we're, we're talking about cartoon characters, for one thing. Um, you know, we're talking about cartoon characters. And when you start, you know, encroaching, there is some pretty raw stuff out there, right? But no game, no life? Sword Art Online? I mean, come on. Uh, like, it, where, where do you stop? Where do you stop? Because as soon as you start censoring that kind of work, you know, you're going you're gonna to start censoring like Dragon Ball and stuff. There have been cases in Australia where people have been prosecuted for possessing this kind of material, even though the images are drawings rather than actual photographs. Like this guy here who, who went to prison for cartoons. He went to prison for cartoons. Again, you know, if we we're talking extreme material, you know, like, yeah, this stuff shouldn't be made available. It's extreme. We don't really want to, you know, whatever, or you have to, you know, mail order or something. You can't buy it at the bookstore. That's one thing. But again, we're talking about titles that are pretty tame. They're pretty mainstream. Uh, and what's going to happen is they're going to push and push and push. And eventually, you know, Japan is going to have to make a decision. Like, are we going to let the West decide what kind of content we're allowed to produce? And I'm not saying everything that Japan produces is my cup of tea, right? I mean, there's some stuff that I'm like, I'm not even interested in. But uh, I, I am interested in 
uh, freedom of creative expression. And I know it's a slippery slope because as soon as you start banning material based on the sensibility of a couple of Karens, it, you know, we're, it's just going to all be Pokemon, Hello Kitty, etc. until they start finding problems with, with Pokemon too. Because, you know, they will. Pokemon was a problem. Remember when Pokemon was pro problematic? The Karens tried to, to, to cause uproar over Pokemon. Um, it's like the outrage of the week. So this is what's going on. The distributors need to choose whether the material is classified. While all videos pass through the classification board, it only looks at comic books if they're submitted, and it's up to the book's distributors to decide if it needs to be classified. Benaros and Sander Griff want this changed and are calling for an ongoing review of classification regulations to extend the board's oversight to printed material. The board is aware that a campaign has been launched about the sale of Japanese manga and anime in Australia. And then in that context of the government's review of classification regulation, this issue has been raised. The board welcomes review. Fans of anime and manga have defended the industry, pointing out the majority of publications are not pornographic. This is true. The owner of Adelaide store in Shintokyo, William Chappell, said that the art form had a 60 year history. And like other parts of the entertainment industry, content could range from child friendly to pornographic. He said while the classification board was experienced in dealing with the material, he was still careful about what he sold in his shop. Well, that's it. I mean, you have to decide on a case by case basis. But again, we're talking about the sensibilities of an Omega Karen who wants to ban stuff like Sword Art Online and No Game No Life. We're not talking about the extreme stuff. We're not talking lolly stuff as far as I can tell. I'm, I don't even think she got that far. She basically, It sounds to me like they just grabbed a stack of manga and they just started looking for problems and then they started banning. Now, this ban is what I believe kicked off uh, the weird Amazon because we're talking about the same titles. But Amazon just started delisting a bunch of these titles from their online store as well. Now you can go to write stuff anime and buy them too but there was no explanation and because she was trying to extend australia's law to online stores as i understand it so i think amazon either she contacted amazon and said well you know australians can buy this too and do you know you're selling kitty porn do you know you're selling some really problematic stuff do you want to be responsible for that do you want us to to sue Amazon? Do you want us to make a big deal to the media about how you're facilitating uh, like literal abuse and exploitation of children, even though they're just freaking cartoon characters? But we saw ever since these Australians started with this campaign, you know, back in February, ever since they started with this campaign, certain titles, certain characters have been affected. We saw that for a while, Hatsune Miku figures were were being flagged. Are they spending all day flagging potentially problematic material on Amazon in an attempt to get Amazon to pull all of it down? I mean, Sword Art Online, really? That's what you're gonna have a problem with? That's what you're gonna have a problem with. So looking into it, now these tweets are translated from Japanese, so the, the English probably isn't isn't very good, but it seems that Professor Kazuko Ito, through an Australian politician, is taking part in creating external pressure that manga and anime, uh, for the ones that are, they're basically saying it's, it's literal abuse of children. Uh, the attorney, Kazuko Ito, takes part in the efforts to regulate Japanese manga and anime in Australia. The aim is the legal regulation of Japanese manga and anime, by external pressure, this is extremely malicious. This is what manga artists have been going to the Japanese government with concerns about. They're like, you don't have, you know, why are you bowing to external pressure? I thought it was America. And I think there are Americans here. I think there are people obviously in Hollywood that would love to tame manga. Uh, we wondered if it was Tencent maybe putting pressure on Japanese companies. And it might be all of the above. But it seems that the root of this recent uproar is this Connie Bonaros uh, working with this Japanese activist and trying to ban uh, anything they deem problematic. I mean, we're rolling the clock back here, guys. And again, I'm not, I'm not into any extreme manga or anime or whatever. But uh, you know, we are talking cartoon characters. Yo, and, and they're already referring to this as like a gateway 
product, I'm like, it's a freaking cartoon. Just put put a, a, a wrap on it. You know, D do like they do here in America. Now, remember the comic book legal defense fund? Somebody brought that up. Uh, somebody brought that up in the, the comments here. And I got to give a, a, a shout out to Black Sage D again, who alerted me to, to all of this. But uh, somebody mentioned the comic book legal defense fund. Yeah, here we go. Imperfect analogy. Um, that's what the comic book legal defense fund was created for. Yeah, because back in the day in America, they tried pulling the same thing. They tried, uh, I believe, arresting someone who created what uh, some Karens here thought was objectionable material. And they were going to prosecute the guy. I think it was, I want to say it was Boiled Angel or something like that, which is, look, this is pretty gross. But at the end of the day, we're talking, we're talking about a comic book. You know, we're talking about pictures. We're not talking about actual people uh, being injured in any way. They're lines on paper. Technically, they're not even people. It's just the way that your brain interprets them. <laughs> you know, so it's just, they just happen to resemble people. Your brain is just interpreting these lines as being people. They're not actual people, but you know, the comic book legal defense fund used to used to be about free speech and used to defend cartoonist rights to be able to create the kind of, of work they want to create, whether or not it suits your taste or suits your sensibilities. And again, you know, we're not talking about extreme content here. We're talking about sword art online, no game, no life. Could you imagine? If, if uh, this Karen came across a stack of like lolly comics or something, oh my God, her head would explode. It would melt. Uh, absolutely. So, you know, I don't know where this is going to go. Um, I, I would like to say, hey, it's just going to, you know, we're going to have a wave of book banning and censorship pass, pass through and then things will kind of roll back to center. But uh, I, I really don't know. I think there are a lot of external forces pushing on Japan right now. Uh, again, you've got, you know, Hollywood and their their sensibilities because they want stuff they can convert into movies. And I read an article the other day about a manga artist who does more risque stuff because he knows he's not going to get turned into an anime, which means that, you know, you're not going to get any Hollywood interest or whatever. And that's what they're, they're looking for in Japan right now because they need the money to produce this stuff. But, I mean, you've got the creator of Love Hina pushing back too and being like, you know, this is too much. Why Why are these companies, you know, why is Tencent deciding what we can and can't produce? Why is Karen, Omega Karen from Australia, uh, colluding with activists in Japan to get this stuff banned? And it does seem to be the source of this recent wave of, of bans. So uh, for now, you can go to Right Stuff Anime. Rightstuff.com, I believe, has a lot of uh, these banned books, which are, I just it blows my mind because some of the stuff is really, really tame. I mean, it's really tame, but uh, this is going to continue until all we have left is Hello Kitty and Pokemon. Then they'll start finding problems with that too, I'm sure. So I'm going to wrap this one up. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, and we'll talk later. Hey guys, thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.